Have you ever worn a shirt, zipped up a jacket, or snuggled under a blanket and noticed the word polyester on the label? It's everywhere. In our clothes, our home furnishings, even in some types of packaging. But have you ever stopped to wonder how this versatile synthetic material is actually made? Today, we're taking a deep dive into the fascinating world of polyester, starting from raw ingredients all the way to the fabric we use every day. Let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. Polyester is a type of synthetic polymer, most commonly known in the textile world as PET, polyethylene terephthalate. That's quite a mouthful, but simply put, it's a kind of plastic. Polyester is man-made, and it doesn't grow on trees or come from animals. Instead, it's created through a complex process in laboratories and factories. What makes polyester special is its strength, durability, and resistance to shrinking, stretching, and wrinkling. These qualities are why it's so widely used, not just in clothing, but also in upholstery, curtains, and even industrial products like ropes and conveyor belts. The journey begins with crude oil. Yes, the same fossil fuel that powers our cars and airplanes. Crude oil is full of hydrocarbon compounds, and through a process called refining, it's broken down into smaller chemical components. From this, two key ingredients are extracted, ethylene glycol and dimethyl terephthalate, or sometimes terephthalic acid, depending on the method. These two chemicals are the building blocks of polyester. In a way, polyester starts off as a clear liquid that doesn't resemble fabric at all. Once these components are extracted, they go through a chemical reaction called polymerization. In simple terms, polymerization is like linking up tiny beads into a long chain. These chains of molecules are what form the polyester polymer. After polymerization, the result is a syrupy, molten substance. This thick liquid is cooled and solidified into long ribbons. These ribbons are then chopped up into small, hard chips that look a bit like plastic pellets. The chips are then dried to remove any moisture, because even the tiniest bit of water can ruin the next step, melt spinning. In this part of the process, the polyester chips are heated until they melt, and then they're pushed through tiny holes in a device called a spinneret. As the molten polymer is extruded, it cools and hardens into long filaments. These filaments are then stretched to align the molecules, which gives the fibers extra strength and elasticity. After that, the fibers are wound onto spools ready for the next stage. At this point, the polyester filaments are still very smooth and shiny. But if you've ever felt a piece of clothing made from polyester, you'll know that it doesn't always feel slick or plastic-like. That's where texturing comes in. Texturing is a mechanical process that gives the smooth filaments a bit of crimp or wave, which makes them feel softer and more like natural fibers. After texturing, the fibers can either be cut into shorter lengths, called staple fibers, similar to how cotton or wool behaves, or they can be left long as continuous filaments. Staple fibers are typically used for blending with natural fibers, while continuous filaments are used for items like linings and performance wear. Once the fibers are ready, they're spun into yarn. The process is very similar to how cotton or wool is spun. Multiple filaments are twisted together to create stronger threads, which can then be woven or knitted into fabric. At this point, the polyester looks much more familiar. 
it can be made into a wide variety of fabric types, everything from silky satins to stretchy jersey knits. The versatility of polyester is one of the reasons it's so widely used in fashion and beyond. Before being used in products, the fabric can be dyed, printed, and finished in many different ways. Thanks to its chemical makeup, polyester holds color very well, which means clothes stay bright even after many washes. Polyester has a lot of benefits. It's strong, lightweight, quick drying, and resistant to wrinkles and shrinking. It's also affordable to produce and easy to care for, which is why it's become a staple in closets around the world. However, there are downsides. Because it's made from petroleum, polyester isn't biodegradable. It can take hundreds of years to break down, which raises concerns about its environmental impact. That's why more and more companies are now investing in recycled polyester, often made from plastic bottles. This helps reduce waste and gives a second life to materials that might otherwise end up in landfills or oceans. As technology continues to advance, we're seeing innovations in how polyester is made. Researchers are developing bio-based polyesters made from renewable sources like corn or sugarcane. Meanwhile, efforts are underway to improve recycling systems and reduce the environmental footprint of polyester production. There's also growing interest in circular fashion, designing clothes in a way that makes them easier to recycle. With smart design and conscious consumption, Polyester doesn't have to be the enemy of sustainability. So the next time you put on your favorite jacket or cozy up in your bedsheets, you'll know the incredible journey that piece of polyester took. From crude oil, to lab chemicals, to spinning machines, and finally to your closet. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.